What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from my Game of Thrones Season 7 preview video. This is not a preview trailer breakdown video, but I just finished watching Episode 5, so now I want to talk about the main event that is coming up in the next episode, which should be pretty damn amazing. I have been waiting for Episode 6 for so long now, and I'm so excited that it's finally the next episode that we're going to see. For those of you that have been subscribed to my channel for a long time already know how hyped I have been for this mission beyond the wall. I have already made so many videos about what could possibly happen during this episode and mainly what will happen when Jon Snow and company get into a battle with the army of the dead. I will be talking about some major spoilers in this video so make sure you proceed with caution if you do not want to hear any, because what I say in this video will most likely come true. I am beyond excited for this episode so let's begin. Alright folks, the stage is now being set up for us to see one of the best episodes in Game of Thrones history, at least in my opinion. Till this day, Hardhome is still one of my favorite episodes because we finally got to see some main characters battle it out with the Army of the Dead. Which is something I have wanted to see ever since the very first episode of this entire series. I still remember when I watched the first episode and we were first introduced to the Night's Watch. When they went beyond the wall and we got our first glimpse of the White Walkers, I thought to myself, I cannot wait to see what happens when we actually see a war between the living and the dead. We did get a small taste of that at Hardhome, but in this next episode, we're going to get so much more than that. We will finally see Ice vs. Fire, the Dragons vs. the Dead, and it's going to be fucking incredible. I don't know about all of you that are watching and listening to this, but ever since the dragons were hatched from their eggs, I have been waiting to see the dragons and the white walkers in the same scene together this whole time. I know it may be hard to believe for some of you because Daenerys hasn't fully committed to helping Jon fight the others, but in episode 6, Daenerys will fly up north with her three dragons and take them beyond the wall, in hopes that she can save Jon and his companions that will be surrounded by the Night King's army. Just seeing this group of characters fighting together against the common enemy is going to be incredible. Back at the beginning of this season, Jon held a meeting and he told Tormund to go to Eastwatch by the Sea with the Wildlings and man the wall. Because as we all know, the Night's Watch is extremely low on men, so Tormund is already there. But now we have the Brotherhood Without Banners and the Hound at Eastwatch by the Sea. It's going to be so much fun watching Tormund and the Hound share some screen time together. The Hound and the Brotherhood Without Banners are on their Lord of Light mission, following what the Hound saw in the flames, because they know the dead are marching on the wall, and they're not going to stop unless someone stops them. Bran Stark has also seen the same thing, and he sent word to Jon Snow on Dragonstone that the dead are coming and they are heading for Eastwatch by the Sea. The Night King and his army will be marching past the mountain that is shaped like an arrowhead, just like the Hound saw in the flames. The assault on the wall will happen at Eastwatch by the Sea, so this is where the defenses will need to be the strongest in order to stop the Night King or at least slow his ass down. But Jon will never have the support in time to stop him before the Army of the Dead make it south of the wall. Jon Snow will be arriving with a nice little team of his own. Now that Bran has sent word to Jon about the Night King heading for Eastwatch, Jon is ready to give these fuckers a fight, and get the proof that he needs so he can get the support that he needs. Jon, Davos, Gendry, and Jorah will arrive at Eastwatch where they will meet Tormund. The Hound and the Brotherhood are there too. Jon needs to go beyond the wall, so who better to take with him than men that are already prepared to go? These men will band together and head out into the wilderness beyond the wall, in search of the dead. Personally, I hope the scenes beyond the wall will take up the majority of this episode, kinda like how they did with Hardhome. So much is gonna be happening during this attack, I just hope they don't try and condense it into short scenes. Because once John and company make contact with the Army of the Dead, all hell is going to break loose. Unfortunately, we are gonna lose some beloved characters during this mission. In the first episode of this season, we saw some of the Night King's secret weapons. He had at least three giants in his army. But this isn't the only thing he will have with him. The Night King also has a polar bear in his army. And there are snow bears in the books too, so they didn't just pull this out of their ass. But Thoros of Mir will be our first big casualty on this mission. Thoros will be shredded by this bear, but he's not going to die right away. But carrying around a severely injured man will definitely slow them down. When Thoros of Mir dies, Beric Dondarrion's going to be kind of screwed. Thoros was able to bring him back from the dead six times, so once Thoros is gone, Beric will essentially be on his last life. In the books, Beric also has the ability to bring people back from the dead, but when he does it, he has to sacrifice himself to bring them back. 
It's going to be interesting to see if they give Barrick this power in the television show too. Barrick could give someone the last kiss that is a much more important character than he is, but I don't think they're going to do that during this episode. But Barrick could potentially give Thoros the kiss, since Thoros saved his ass so many times, but like I said, they probably won't be doing this just yet at least. But while all of this is going on, while they are under attack, Daenerys will finally decide to come and help them. Daenerys will take off from Dragonstone with all three of her dragons and take them up north. Tyrion will advise against this, but Daenerys will ignore him once again, which will make Tyrion extremely worried as he watches Daenerys leave Dragonstone. Daenerys will arrive, providing Dragon Ex Machina, as Jon and company are surrounded on all sides. Finally, after all these years, we will finally get to see Ice vs. Fire. Daenerys is going to show up and start wrecking these whites with her dragon fire, killing them by the dozens at once, which will allow everyone to escape but Jon. Of course, Jon has to be the hero and stay back and fight them off while everyone climbs on Drogon. And now I know some of you don't believe this because we haven't seen anyone get on her dragons except her riding Drogon. This will be pretty interesting to see because you don't have to actually be a Targaryen to get on a dragon, but typically a dragon will only have one rider at a time. Like Aegon the Conqueror would never get on one of his sister's dragons, and neither of his sisters would actually get on his dragon. So it will be crazy seeing almost a dozen people get on Drogon. I don't know how they're going to explain this in this show, but honestly, I really don't care at this point because a lot of things happen that really don't make any sense. I'm just going to enjoy this being the spectacle that it is. During all this chaos, somehow the Hound is going to capture a white and take it with him too. And I'm not sure how he's going to keep it secure on a damn dragon, but he will get the damn thing back to the wall somehow. It does say that Jon's gonna try and climb on Drogon too, but he will fall off as Drogon takes off to fly to safety, which will leave Jon all alone and still surrounded by the Whites. But before Daenerys is actually able to leave, something insane is going to happen. Something a lot of people don't want to see, and some people still don't believe. But the Night King will kill one of her dragons, Viserion. Daenerys will lose a dragon, and this is going to change the outcome of the entire show. Not only will the Night King's army be even stronger with a damn dragon, but this will also weaken Daenerys' chances of beating Cersei. Daenerys has been taking losses all season long, and she has wanted this her entire life, and now she finally gets to Westeros with what looks like an unstoppable force, and she ends up getting her ass kicked in almost every single episode since she arrived. The entire series is going to change after this episode. It's going to be crazy. This season is going to end dramatically. After the Night King kills Viserion, Jon will be saved just in time by his uncle Benjen. And I gotta be honest with you, this is gonna be heartbreaking. I know Benjen is no longer a normal person, but him sacrificing himself for his nephew is gonna be very emotional. Jon loves his uncle Benjen so much. I mean, Jon wanted to be just like him. He wanted to be in the Night's Watch, he wanted to be a ranger, just like his uncle. When Benjen went missing years ago, Jon has thought about this for years, always wondering where his uncle was, and to finally see him again during the absolute worst situation, and to see him die almost immediately will be crushing not only for Jon, but for the viewers too. I was actually hoping this wasn't going to be true. I didn't want to see Benjen die just yet, but when you see Jon riding off on the horse in the trailer, you just have to know that's his uncle Benjen's horse, after he saves him from being surrounded. Unfortunately, with Uncle Benjen's death, we are going to lose a Stark this season, and we might even see Benjen again in Season 8 as a full-blown white, fighting with the Night King. And there might even come a time when Jon comes face to face with his uncle during the Great War, and Jon may have to kill him for good, making it an even worse reunion than the last one. Now that the series is winding down towards the endgame, it's only going to continue to get crazier and crazier. The Night King is going to have a fucking dragon now and he will use this dragon, and giants, and bears, and possibly even spiders to wreak havoc upon Westeros. It's going to be extremely intense, and I cannot wait to see it continue to unfold. I am wondering what this is going to do to Daenerys psychologically. She looks at her dragons like they are her kids. How much do you think this is going to change her after she loses a dragon to the Night King? I could see her character getting even darker and more desperate after this. I'm not going to say she's going to go mad because everyone keeps saying that, but this will significantly change her from here on out. When Jon Snow and company escape with the White, the Night King is going to be pretty damn pissed that Jon Snow was able to get away from him again. And now that he has a dragon added to his army, he will be heading straight for Eastwatch next, and it's going to be the start of an all-out war. 
the Great War will have officially begun. But let's just hope John is able to rally the realm in time before everyone else is killed and turned into more meat for the Night King's army. Let me know what you think down below. I'm anxious to see what all of you have to say about this, so please, if you have any insight, put it down below because I'd love to hear from all of you. I am going to work on my episode 5 breakdown now, that way I can release it tomorrow. Then I'm going to start working on the episode 6 preview trailer breakdown so I can release that to you by Tuesday. I want to thank everyone for stopping by and watching another one of my videos. I really, really appreciate that. All of you wonderful people have been showing this channel more support than nearly every other channel out there, including ones that are bigger than mine. I just wanted to say I love all of you for that, and I work harder every day so I can keep bringing you videos to show my appreciation in some way, because this is by far the strongest support group in the community. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters, who show their continued support month after month without me even asking anyone to do so. All of you truly are the greatest. Have a great night. I will see you tomorrow with the breakdown. Bye.